Hey there my webcrafting wizards, today I have a sick episode for you. We're gonna learn how to make complex website animations with no code whatsoever. You know, as a designer and developer, when we get a new customer, we usually have this internal battle of like how much time can we allocate to a certain thing. And when there's websites that are just like simple presentation website with animations, you know, that could take quite a bit to code out, quite a bit of time. So that's when I opt for no code tools like Wix Studio, which does a fantastic job for this. So let's have a look, let's take a look. What's the straw in the way here. Sorry, it's my McDonald's Coca-Cola cup. It's empty. It's been a rough day. So let's get started in Wix Studio. The first thing I'm going to do is add a section to the page. So just click this new plus icon here and that adds a section right here in the middle. Cool. So now clicking on this empty space, I can go here and right click on this and say apply advanced CSS grid and hit apply. Cool. So now what this does is essentially it enables us to add as many rows and columns to our section as we want. And in this section, we're going to have the three cards and those three cards are going to animate based on some scroll. So let's have a look how we can do that, shall we? So let's head here. And as you can see here by the layout, we have rows and columns. So essentially, I want to go here to rows and click plus two times. There we go. So we have three rows. And the min height here, we can switch this over to scale it to whatever height we want. I'm going to use VH and do, you can do min VH as well. Somewhere here, min content, min max. We're just going to do a set of 70, eh, not that big, maybe 60 VH like that. Yeah, maybe bigger, 75. There we go. And I'll just do the same for all of these. So let's go over here and switch it over to VH. There we go, 75. Again, viewport height essentially means how much how much space you have available, right? So if this is the amount of space I have available on my screen. 100 VH means exactly this amount of space. 50 VH means half of the size of the, whatever screen we're on. So if we're on mobile and it's this small, that half is only half back to the video. We got three. We got three rows. Now what do we do? Well, in these three rows, now we can place a container in and that container is going to essentially act like our div. So head over here, we'll pop in a container here and I'm just going to stretch it all the way out like that. So it essentially stretches to the size of our section. Uh, our, of our row, I should say, because <laughs> we have three rows, right? Okay, so there's one, and here you can move it around as well, so I can place it to be first, which is fine. And one more thing I want to do is add some uh, padding and margin here. So I'm going to do five for left and right. Uh, let me just move myself so you can see that, see? Right there. You can add five on either side, and we'll do three on top and bottom like that. Cool. And one more thing I want to do is add some roundness to this. So if we head over here to the top, we can do 24 on each side, just like that. Cool. So there's our card. Now in this card, I'll add a media. Claw tree came out. I'm not sure if you're in the AI stuff, but it's really exciting. So I thought I'll do something with Claw. So I added this image here. So I'll just add it to the page. As you can see, it automatically just like stretches out to the size of it. Now that we have this card, what I want to do is also add a big text here on top of it and say Claude 3. There we go. Let's make this much bigger. We can go up to like 96. Cool. Now that we have the text here, what essentially we want to do is duplicate that container that we had in the background and place it on the second grid here. Okay, so just drop a container here and essentially you need to do it for all three here. So even on the last one, pop a container in. Again, full scale it, and then you can resize the padding here by adding five on each side and three to the top, okay? So go through that, and now once you have this set up, essentially, oh, I'm gonna do that in a second. What you can do is go to the second container here, and we're gonna add a line, a vertical line. Drop it in, and we're just gonna stretch it out so it's the size of the actual container, okay? And then what we're gonna do is rename this to second page. We can do second trigger like that and let's rename these now it's just so it's not too confusing in our code because once you start adding all these containers second page I can say second container like that and this will be the last one and this will be the first one so let's rename this as first container as well cool now clicking on the second container here on the second trigger we can go to this lightning bolt up here at the top and we can add a scroll trigger animation the cool bit here is that we're hacking our way around it and we can use the length and the height of the 
line to essentially animate that page. All right, we're taking that full. Well, essentially, you can adjust that to whatever size you want. You can make it like 50% of it. So you can only trigger the scroll animation there. In this case, in our case, we want essentially the whole card, right? The whole length of it to be animated. So I'm just scratching it all the way down. So what we can do is add a plus here. And here at the animated element, we can choose on canvas. I'll just click on the text here on the claw tree. And I'm going to choose to its design. It might be from its design. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. And I'm going to choose slide. Okay. And then when we hit adjust animation, make sure you don't click on anything else. Yeah. It needs to be, by the way, we need to go back because right now, as soon as it scrolls all the way to the max size of it, that's when it's going to come in view, but we want the opposite. So we want to do it from its design. So let's go adjust. And as you can see, when I scroll down, nothing happens because the animation only triggers on this blue marker here, right? Whereas our view right now is on the red. So nothing's happening now. But if I move this down like that, and I scroll, look at that, now it's happening. If I want this to finish quicker, I can just move this into like 30%. So now, as you can see, it works just like that. Um, I want to do it from the bottom, just like that. But as soon as this is kind of like fully in view, or maybe even like 75%, I want the text to be fully shown here. So I can just bring in the zero a bit closer to kind of the position I'm happy with, maybe like 13, 12%. Like I'm happy with that. Like if it shows up there, like that's good. Okay, cool. And then we can stretch this out a bit further to like 40 and that's looking good. Now we need to do the same thing for the card as well. So let's grab the second trigger, add a new one. And for the canvas, I'll choose the first container here. So let's click on the first container. Again, we're going to do from its design. And for this one, we're going to do a shrink. Yes. So when we scroll, let's adjust this to 40 here and maybe from 10. So when we scroll, as you can see, it's going to go small like that, but that's a bit too crazy. So let's bring the scale up to something like 80. So it doesn't go as much. Maybe even that's too much. 85 ish like that. All right. We want this to be quite subtle. There we go. Cool. Now the problem is when we hit preview mode here, scroll, as you can see, that's that's looking good. I like the way that looks. It's the problem is that this is not coming on top of it. So to fix that, what we can do is grab this first container and add a position sticky to it. So here we go, position sticky. And now what it means is as soon as it hits the top corner, it's just gonna switch to a position fixed. So it's always gonna be on top. So let's scroll. And as you can see, it stays there, which is fantastic. But to fix that, what I'll do is change the second container to a position sticky as well. And you know, this like actual line doesn't need to be visible. So we can just turn it off like that. So now when we scroll, let's have a look. And look at that. We got that coming right on top of it, which is perfect. Lovely. Okay. So that looks great. Uh, again, let's hide this line. Let me click on it. There we go. Line color gone by the second page. Let's make this. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to take the whole section and just add a grayish color to it like that. And then on this actual card, I'll make that white. OK, I think that's going to look quite cool. There we go. Yeah, that looks nice. There we go. On the second card, I just want to make some cool animations. I want to add graph animations stuff moving around, make it real exciting. So let's go here and add a couple of lines. I'm going to make a graph essentially to show like the performance of Claude for us. So I'll do like a three pixels. I don't want to make this too intense in color. So we can do like a lightish gray like that. Maybe a bit more intense than that. Something like that reduced a bit to 85. That's looking good. Okay. I'll make this a bit thicker just to show you kind of how you can play around with this and just be super fast, really. So essentially, I'm making a table here to show the performance for uh, Claude. So let's just do one vertically. I'll do one horizontally like this, stretch it out. Cool. And I actually uploaded an SVG image. So I'll show you what I got. It's just a line. <laughs> Where is it? Here. here we go. It's just a line, a dot line, essentially. So I'll import that. We'll put it down here, stretch it out so it's a bit bigger. Let's go with something like that. 
Okay, let's grab everything as well and kind of reposition. Okay, so something like that. And then I'll just add some text here. So we have haiku for the, which is, this is the slowest one, right? And then you have Sora for the middle ground uh, large language model. And then we have Opus for the best of the best. So let's name that Opus. All right, just adding some text here. We can add stuff like, you know, like cost per million here or something like that as well. I also added some text here on the side that shows you the intelligence level. So let's open up the panel. I'll grab the second trigger again and add a slide to this vector art that we have here. So let's do slide, adjust animation. And it's not slide, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a reveal. There we go. And there we go, look at that. And then you can adjust it any way you want. So I'll bring it a bit more in, trigger it at 20, finish it at around 70. There we go, something like that. Maybe that, like, you kind of want to finish the animations when it's already like half, like halfway through, like maybe here, not like down here. That's not where you want to finish the animation because you're off the page already. So let's grab that line again, adjust this. Again, make sure you don't click off of it when you click adjust here. So like here, I want this to be done here already. So I'll bring it down to like 50-ish. There we go. Cool, so let's hit preview. So let's hit preview again. Scroll down and take a look at that. How cool is that? Ended up adding another page here. Or as you can see, you have these graph animations as well, and then the text revealing itself. So this is pretty much the same as we did with a line. So I added another line on this page. But the way you can do these graph animations, it looks cool, but essentially it's just shapes. So I can grab a shape here, change the basics, and I can make it a square or like a rectangle, right? And I can move it in the position I like. I can add the colors I want to it. But more importantly, you can just use the slide again. So if you go to entrance or scroll and do a reveal, there it is. That's all it really is. It's just basic shapes that you're playing with and creating these animations. So hopefully this gave you a good understanding of how you can create more complex animations in a website and you don't actually need any code. So that can save you quite a bit of time. So hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you thought of it. If you want to send in designs and if you want me to do redesigns of your, of your designs, <laughs> then send it through. Join the merge community in the description down below. Come on Discord, hop on, let's have a chat, and I'll see you in the next one. Drop us up.